Hey everyone, I just watched a uh, Happy Cabby video, and the video isn't, isn't so much what I want to respond to, it's more the description, um, what was written by Happy Cabby about the reasons why Hostess decided to close its doors and people aren't going to have Twinkies for a while. Um, the last things he said uh, were a pay cut is almost always better than a layoff. Sorry, but I blame this one on the union. Um, he, In this description, he gave a link to a Wall Street Journal article, and I'm just going to use that as my reference here. His own link. Um, no. No. The unions in question had already given back. This company, Hostess, had gone through bankruptcy multiple times, okay? And each time, these union workers were asked to give up wages and benefits and all sorts of pension stuff. Finally, one of the unions that worked inside their uh, plants, one of them decided to take a stand, you know? And I know how that feels, uh, especially in, in this case. Um, what I see happening here is we're not going to see the end of the Twinkie. Obviously, with the run on Twinkies that, have, that has happened in the last 24 hours when, after this news came out, uh, no, we're not going to see the end of the Twinkie. They're going to sell the Twinkie to somebody else. And what's going to happen is probably they're going to realize that if they were to come back together as one company, then all of those workers that they'd get would probably be very familiar with each other and probably want to unionize again. So in order to do some union busting, what they're going to do is sell off different parts of their company to different other companies and uh, make sure that the ding-dongs aren't made by the same company as the Twinkies. I'm very familiar with this tactic. Uh, when I worked for GE, I had very good benefits. I had very good uh, pension plan. I had uh, awesome 401k. Uh, and I had no union. And what happened to my calibration lab, you know, while I was tweaking on electronics one day we got the notice that we were being sold and we had two choices we could resign or we could take the job with the new company and the new company promised that they weren't going to change our benefits any for the first year and they couldn't even keep that promise um, they slashed our pension our 401k benefits um, our health benefits, even our sick days, <laughs> you know, um, a reduction in sick days, a reduction in vacation days, all sorts of things because we got sold to a different company. And I wouldn't stand for it. And what I did was I quit. And then I went and found a job with a union. I'm now a journeyman wireman with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Now, I kept in touch with some of the employees that were, you know, in that same lab in General Electric that just had to change a sign on the door, and they were still in the same plant. Um, I, I was there for a while too, but I, I, I quit as I saw what was happening with the the new company, which was Davis Innotech at the time, and then. After I left, these uh, my my coworkers they were sold to other companies like Cyprus and a couple of others, and basically each company had its own stab at leaning everything because apparently when you work for GE directly, you are you know fat on the tit of all of the benefits that unions bring 
And so when they can get one section of the company isolated, like the electronics calibration lab, and they're not represented by a union like all the workers down on the plant floor, they can sell it off and compartmentalize it in order to cut the benefits of those employees. Now here's the kicker. I know exactly what I made for GE because I build the customers, right? And although my pay and benefits from GE could not have amounted to more than two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, you know, you take all the the insurance, and uh, I was I was using a lot of the tuition assistance and tuition reimbursement and all that. So I was really trying to get as much out of my job as possible. Could not have been over $250,000 a year. And another 250000 would have gone to the equipment that I was using, being recertified and, and traceable to standards at the National Institute of Standards of, and Technology. So... $500,000 it costs probably to have one calibration technician, right? But I was billing from customers either within GE and other GE companies or outside of GE. I was billing upwards of 5 or $6 million a year. So the return on the investment in me every year was huge. It was a huge amount of money. But they wanted more. Okay? Some manager at some some level thought that he could, you know, squeeze out 2, 3, 4% more profit by making these changes. And when I looked at how much money they were making on top of what it cost, you know, just to invest in myself and the equipment that I used and, you know, the roof over our heads, and, you know, for our lab, you know, the, the power and all that, it just, it didn't make sense that they would be that greedy. Except that they're a publicly traded company and if they, you know, don't, operate as a corporation that is just bent on making money as a bottom line, then the shareholders will revolt and kick out the CEO, maybe, you know. Or somebody was sipping on Mai Tais in Hawaii for a week because he made this awesome decision to screw everyone below him. Either way, if I had a union representing me, through those years none of that shit would have happened okay and that's why I went and became a member of a union <sighs> now I see Happy Cabby blaming the death of Hostess on the one union that at the end had had, had its workers squeezed so much and had given up so much and saved the company like 80 million through the last restructuring that happened after a bankruptcy, you know. When someone gets shot, okay, bang, bang, they get shot in their gut shot and they die. The coroner does not list the cause of death as acute loss of blood. No, the coroner lists the real fucking cause, okay, and in the article that Happy Cabby used as his reference, it listed multiple other causes that led to the demise of Hostess, okay? The union pushing back, finally, after its workers had given up so much, that was the straw that, that, that broke the camel's back, maybe, but it was a straw compared to everything else. Okay, it's a horrible economy. Gas prices went up. Uh, that means, you know, ingredients coming in and put putting the the stuff on the shelves on the way out 
both cost more. Uh, way more. And it just doesn't stop the, the raises in, in gas prices. So, yeah. Horrible economy where people aren't buying hostess foods because the, it's really luxury foods. Uh, you know, these comfort foods. They, they're they not very nutritious. They're completely against the trend of health food that is is sweeping over America right now. Even Happy Cabby's not doing his part in buying enough Hostess products because he's trying to lose fucking weight. So, after all of that, you think that these workers, without, without seeing, you know, without giving any uh, figures as to how much of the problem was their pay and benefits... I didn't see any figures in that article, and, and uh, Happy Cabby didn't give any figures in, in, in what he wrote. Uh, without seeing the figures, he's just going to lay the blame on the unions. Um, I know that Happy Cabby recently has had a problem on YouTube because he expressed some opinions that weren't very liberal-leaning at all, and he, he got some blowback for that. And I appreciate the, the courage that it takes to come out with an opinion that is not liberal here on YouTube, on the Internet. But fuck anyone who's not siding with people earning a livable wage who have given up a lot of their wages and then when they finally take a stand, you know, it, everything gets dumped on them. Fuck that, you know?